Hello guys, I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm gonna go into just two things. I was gonna do three, but just, I'm gonna do two. So the vaccine, I'm not taking it. And basically there's two reasons why. One, that came out pretty fast. Usually vaccines take a little while to develop, not like years or anything, but um, this one only took maybe three months which either you can look two ways on that. One is not really going to work or two, how they have it so quickly. I don't know. Um, but I'm not going to do it. Not right now. Um, probably not ever. I don't typically do vaccinations just because they don't always work or they give you the wrong ones that happened two or three years ago with the flu vaccine. Um, they gave you for one strain, but another strain is what really took off. So you were vaccinated for no reason and you still got sick. So the other reason is I, my husband and I actually are both like this, where we don't react the same way as most people to medicines. So if you get a medicine that works for most people, it's probably going to give us the, all the super negative consequences, like the ones where they're like, want to kill yourself, uh, so tired that you can't do anything, um, you know, bleeding from different places. So I just don't, I don't look at that and go, oh, that's going to be for me. I look at that and go, oh, something else I'm not going to be able to take. <laughs> um, <clears throat> also, it's very, very weird to me that they have people sitting up there on television taking this thing. The last time I saw that, a lot of animals died and a lot of people had really bad, bad reactions to it. So one of the things that you can look at too is we had this Florida doctor who died. It said he died several weeks after receiving COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, I read a different article that said he took the vaccine. He was perfectly healthy. There was nothing else wrong with him. And then three days into that, he started bleeding internally. He had the red spots on his skin that mean bleeding internally. So this is an RNA um, vaccine. So that means it goes in there, it rearranges the DNA of some of your cells in order to instruct it how to fight whatever it is. In this case, it's COVID. So when they do things like that, they it doesn't always, you know, give proper instruction, right? So this gentleman, Dr. Gregory Michael, 56, suffered a hemorrhagic stroke from lack of blood platelets because he was just constantly bleeding. He would not, um, most people, whenever you bleed, your, your cells react and then every, then you clot up. He couldn't do that. So he just bled to death basically internally. Um, they're saying we don't know that if it is actually the vaccine Oh, here it is right here. In a Facebook post, Michael's wife, Heidi, said he sought emergency care after three days because he had dots on his skin that indicated internal bleeding. This condition led to his stroke. And um, then they go into some other cases where other vaccines have caused um, the same thing to happen. So vaccines are not like this 100% safe thing. You're basically trading off. You're saying that I am going to trade off getting a possible coverage from one thing, even though it may kill me. <clears throat> so it's a weird trade off that we have started to make. So anyway, this is the Pfizer vaccine. So Pfizer, along with his partner BioNTech, made the vaccine. So this is another reason why I don't want to, I just, I'm like, mm. and they're saying that, you know, it is important to note that serious adverse events, including deaths that are unrelated to the vaccine are unfortunately likely to occur at a similar rate as they would in the general population. Okay. Unfortunately though, this guy was completely healthy hundred percent. And then all of a sudden he took your vaccine and then now he's internally bleeding three days later. So that's, that is probably the vaccine. I don't think they will ever actually say it is. I think they'll try and find something else because then people won't take it and they want people to take it. Either whether you think that's for nefarious reasons or not, that's what they want. So let's see. They've got five million, five million people vaccinated against it. 
great. If they can take it and have nothing wrong with them and they want to, then they should, but I just don't want to. It's, it's the way that they're pushing it out. What has happened to people? Like, I haven't seen anybody like, yeah, I got a rash. Um, or anything like that. It's either like normal reactions to vaccines, which is, um, bruising and or soreness at the site of the vaccine where you take it or death. So there doesn't seem to be anything in the middle. And usually the way my body works towards these things, it's usually the other side. So this scares me to death. Like, I hope it's not mandatory because I don't know what I'm going to do if it turns into that. So his wife says he was a very healthy 56 year old, loved by everyone, delivered hundreds of babies and worked tirelessly through the pandemic. Um, she said a team of doctors from across the country tried for two weeks to raise his platelet count to no avail, which means everything that they did to try and help him maintain his blood didn't work, which means it's not something we've run across before, most likely. He was conscious until suffering a hemorrhagic stroke that took his life. So the whole time that this was going on, he was awake for it. She says, I believe that people should be aware that side effects can happen, that it is not good for everyone, and in this case, destroy a beautiful life. A perfect family has affected so many people in the community. Do not let his death be in vain. Please save more lives by making this information news. So even she was afraid that this would get covered up. So this is one of those things, this is why I'm very heavily on it needs to be your choice. Because not everyone's going to react to everything the same way. Science and medicine, well, medicine specifically, is based on what is going to be best for the most people. So that means even though it's good for like, it can even be different in your own family. Like my, bro I can take things my brother can't, my brother can take things I can't. We can take the same thing and have a different reaction. So when it comes to things like this, people need to be able to make their own choices of whether or not they are actually going to take that risk. So that's what I think about that. And that's where I am with that. I just, I'm not going to do it. And, uh, I think you should have the right not to. And in, in America you do. All right, guys. So the next thing I want to talk about, which I think is just number one, it's kind of hilarious because the news is making everything out to be like Trump. This was Trump's coup. This was Trump's doing and all this stuff. So I watched this thing unfold. Okay. So people were there to protest Joe Biden getting into the White House because he shouldn't be there, basically. I am one of the people who think that it was rigged, stolen, whatever word you want to use. There's no way that you can convince me that it wasn't because of the facts that are going on. So we have lots of news stories where people are saying that where states are reporting that they have so many people let's say a thousand people, but they have 2000 votes. Come on guys. It's clearly wrong. Okay. So well, the way they do is percentages. They had 200% turnout. You can't have a 200% turnout. Okay. You can have a 100% turnout. The amount of dead people voting, like I've said before, I'm kind of already almost used to it. It still makes me angry. It still upsets me, but I, I'm like, okay, so how many, every time we have an election, I'm like, so how many dead people voted? Cause I know what's going to happen. We had more of that than ever before. It's just, it's one of those things where you know what happened. You see the proof of it, even in my own district, right? Where people were going to vote when they went and they voted and they used the machine, they would vote, they would vote straight Republican. And then they'd take it, they take the printout and go to put it in the the second machine, which is, I think the tally one. And then they would look at their paper and it would say straight Democrat. Okay. And that's just us in little old South Carolina, nowhere in between, you know, we're not an incorporated place. We're a small place. So I have even had my neighbors report that it happened the other way where they voted straight Democrat and the machines changed it, changed it to straight Republican. So the machines were wrong were bad. We turned around and used the same exact machines again to do the counts, which is idiotic. And then we have all of this information that came out also, which the news does not report on that says that we have like 200%, 280%, 300%, 
return ballots. You can't have that. We have video evidence of people counting ballots when no one is around. That's illegal. We have evidence of people not going to jail for doing these illegal things. Okay. I mean, these people are on video. They're blatant. They don't even care. You're supposed to, to keep this stuff fair. It's set up a certain way. If you're a vote counter, then you sit there and there's a Republican on one side, a Democrat on another side, and then they all look at it to make sure you're, you are counting it correctly. And that is going where it's supposed to go. So without that, people are able to take those boxes, write on them, change them, whatever, depending on how your, um, depending on how your state uses the paper that you submit. You, um, sorry, hold on. You can change it. And they have shown that several times too. Let me turn my phone off trying to have a conversation. Sorry about that. So with all of that going on, people, just regular people like me, I'm angry. I, and I don't know what to do about it. If I was there, I probably would have stormed the White House too, <laughs> just to be honest, because this, it's just, it's been years and years and years in the making where we have, you know, we're supposed to be having these free and fair elections and we haven't had free and fair elections in a long time. But then this one, they're so, they're just like slapping us in the face. See, psh, psh, psh. we're just going to take it and there's nothing you can do. After having the Obamacare shoved down our throat and we didn't want that either, this um, president's using these, um, God, what's it called? Where they they just write it and all of a sudden it's law. Let's see if I can remember. Sorry, my brain just stopped. <clears throat> anyway, writing those, which is not what they're for. It's not so you can just sit there and start making laws by yourself. You're the president. You're supposed to have veto power and that's it. Shut up. Go sit in your corner. I mean, I just, you know, uh, number one also so that's where I'm at. I'm very emotional about it. I'm angry. I'm upset. So number one, this is not a coup. And if you look at this from, from my perspective as an American, I'm looking at my vote. My vote needs to matter. My vote needs to count for what I voted it for. And it didn't this time. It was probably changed. Okay. So let's read this a little bit. Let's see. So President Donald Trump on Wednesday riled the supporters up in a speech filled with lies about the election. Okay, so no, he didn't. The uh, speech that he gave didn't say that it was stolen. It didn't say anything. If you go and you find it online, he's just saying, you know, we need to fight because it's not over yet. And it wasn't. You don't, this, you can challenge the results of our elections. That's what makes it free. It's part of it. Before they stormed the U.S. Capitol, a stunning act of insurrection, the likes of what the U.S. has not seen in the modern era. Act of insurrection. Okay, so our... This is not an act of insurrection. Because our Constitution... Hello, guys. I'm sorry. I had to stop myself there uh, as I'm editing this video. It is not um, our Constitution that gives us this. This is part of our Declaration of Independence, part of the things that we hold to be self-evident and God-giving. So let me just read it to you real quick, okay? And again, this link will be in the comments that I have, the pinned comment. Here's what it says. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. So again, they're there because I allow them to be, not because they're so smart or so much better or need or great and powerful or anything. They're there because they are allowed to be by the grace of the people. Okay, let's go on. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. So this is what I mean later on when I'm saying, you know, 
We are, we are allowed to deconstruct it and make it again. We are allowed to do that. So it, it's hard to say that it's an insurrection when you're all, this is part of our tradition, law, whatever you want to say. These are part of, this is part of the culture of America. So I, this is also why I'm saying that they scared people who needed to be scared. They need to be reminded that they work for us. They're there because we put them there and we can take them back out too. Then we are allowed to go against it and remake it. So at any time somebody comes up here to the White House to protest or whatever, then to me that's not a coup. You can't run a coup against something you're allowed to take apart. And that's how I'm thinking about it. So anyways, so number one, it's not that. Number two, the people who were violent, we've seen a lot of investigative reporting saying that it was not Trump people, it was Antifa dressed as Trump people. And, or not even as Trump people, because one of these pictures, this guy looks exactly like Antifa, where he's dropping in there to it. Let's see if I can find it. And the other thing I'm going to point out, which probably people don't think about, when they look at these pictures, this guy right here, this guy does not look like any Trump supporter I've ever seen. This guy looks like Antifa. He's dressed like Antifa. He's got a helmet like that and everything. So we've seen a couple. We've also seen there's a woman who broke in here, is not a Trump supporter, is an anti-Trump supporter. She's part of Antifa. She broke in here, took a laptop and was trying to sell it. So a lot of this is also you know, a lot of this is Antifa and it's so that they can get in there and get stuff. Whatever it is they can grab. Laptops, cell phones, paperwork, whatever they can take. Okay. So what is hilarious to me is this is a guy who's supposed to be, this is a protester, right? So these guys look like Trump supporters to me. They got the hats on. You know, this is the only way I'd even be able to tell. They're dressed normally, right? So... What he's doing is he's sitting in that seat of power because he's sending a message to our government. You don't get to just shove crap down our throats. You don't get to do this. We can still touch you. And I'm glad that they did it. And I'm happy that they did it because guess what? This is their rights as Americans. They can do this. So if you're watching this and you're not in America, just know that what the news is reporting is not correct. And from people who, who are in America and think that's what happened, I would suggest that you do more research. So here we are, protesters on the front. This is peaceful. This guy's peaceful. Whoever did this was not peaceful, shouldn't have done that probably. But I'm actually okay with it. I don't, I don't feel bad. I don't look at that and go, oh no, those poor reporters. I don't care. They lie to us all the time. <clears throat> trying to hold the protesters back but again I don't see any guns or anything a bunch of my fellow Americans on uh, stuff that they own by the way because everything up here is paid for by our tax money everything that any of these people have in this building is paid for by my tax money your tax money my husband's tax money my brothers your brothers everybody anybody who pays taxes has paid for that so as far as I'm concerned it's mine and I share it with my fellow Americans this guy's just walking. These guys are coming down. Receive medical treatment. Let's see. Disrupt the sessions of Congress. Yeah, because they used they used a, a gas form of pepper spray. So it hits you too. Especially if the wind shifts. Okay, so here's a guy clashing with police. I'd like to see more. With these pictures, I'd like to have more context. This right here looks really deceiving. All of this right here is from the cops. And if you know anything about American history, just because the cops do that does not mean that the protesters are doing anything that is wrong. This is another one that's kind of incendiary, right? The paramedics perform a cardiopulmonary resuscitation on a patient on January 6th but they're not saying it's part of the protest. They're just saying, look, here's a picture of somebody getting some help. And it doesn't say that she got this 
cardiopulmonary or she didn't it doesn't say that whatever is wrong with her is because of the riots they just put it in there and say it is for all we know she doesn't care either way and she was sitting on the side watching it all happen all right There's people getting sprayed they're running through the house chamber all right so here's also some other pictures i think you should see because let's see is this the right one no where did they all go let's see here i was on a different one that had the picture of the guy in the buffalo suit <laughs> if you haven't seen him let's see if we can find him right quick so there's a guy in a buffalo suit and this is what i will always remember from this myself is um he is standing where nancy pelosi usually stands speaker of the house and he's just like got his arms up in the air and everything so the other one that i was looking at had like they're taking pictures of trump supporters and these trump supporters are sitting down they're not even doing anything so for me this whole thing it was a coup it was a coup it wasn't these are people who are upset just like me about what's going on voting what's going on in our capital as far as we're inching more and closer and closer towards a communist society which most of us don't want no matter what the news tells you most people don't want that okay uh let's see well doggone it if i can find it i'll put it in at the end of the video oh gosh okay so anyway I do this to where i talk to you like i'm talking to my friends if i was talking to my friends this is what i would bring up i would bring up some other things too like we all know the government lies that's not that's not a big um that's not a big reveal you know we all know that there is corruption everywhere and something else to think about is like when i think about this okay i think about i didn't vote for trump on the first time go around because i thought he's a businessman he's just going to run america like a businessman he's going to trade off our land and everything else just like they all do and i was wrong so whenever i was watching I'm, I'm watching him to see what he does i'm watching him to see how people react i'm watching him to see what sort of things get reported on what sort of things don't get reported on what sort of things are happening so one of the things that i found the most interesting about what happened when trump got in office was that there were major child rings child sex rings that just went down like that like that like that in the first two or three months of his of his presidency a lot of these child sex rings got wiped out they were arrested they were charged they were taken in now, i don't know if that's just a coincidence or not but i know that in no presidency that i have ever been a part of in my whole life or read anything about was that something that happened <clears throat> i've never heard anybody talk about it nothing but it happened under his um i like that he didn't that he tried to get us out of nato i don't want to be in nato i like that he put taxes on china's imports i don't want i don't want to be a nation where everything that we purchase comes from somewhere else i want us to make our own stuff like we did before i want us to i mean it may be more expensive but you're supporting your fellow americans instead of a communist regime basically because if they can get people to work they can then take their that money and go off and buy their drugs and their all this that they buy that's how that that's another way that it makes money so just in closing guys i gotta wrap it up because i know this video is long <laughs> but when i was watching this unfold also i was watching it on apple news and apple news was saying things like or no i'm sorry google news was reporting consistently that president trump was saying uh don't get violent stay peaceful don't get violent stay peaceful stay peaceful stay peaceful the day after the news starts reporting that he riled them up see it says right here that trump provoked an attempt even though he was saying don't do that don't do that while this thing was being reported so our news is being changed day by day and all you have to do is sit there and watch to see the changes they're not really hiding them so and some 
do mention that he was like, no, remain peaceful. But they weren't saying that he was out there the whole time saying, remain peaceful, remain peaceful. Now, again, these guys didn't kill anybody. They didn't hurt anybody. They scared some people who needed to be scared. And that's how I feel about that. And I'm okay with thinking that and saying that. So uh, the people in the White House need to understand that they work for us. They, they are there because we give them the grace to be there, not because they are any kind of special person at all. I am sick and tired, sick and tired. That so much thought that I want to cry of the government telling me what's best for me, what's good for me, what to think, how to think, and all this other stuff. Sick and tired of it. Especially when it comes to like, they're wanting me to get this vaccine. They're wanting me to do this, that, and the other. I don't care. I don't care. Because they're trying to push me to do it, I'm not going to. And that's another reason I'm not going to. Like I said before in the beginning of the video. So I'm sorry this was rambly. It's just something I needed to say because it's just, I'm so, I'm ready to leave. I wish that we could do another tea party because that is what this is to me where nobody really got hurt and some guys just threw some tea over a, a ship to make a point and these guys are making a point. You can't silence us. You can't get rid of us. And the White House having that more, having all of those guys up there that had greater security and all this stuff was a message back saying, don't, no, no, don't mess with us because we can still get you American people. And it, for me in my whole life, basically, since I was probably 11 or 12, let's say 12, it has been us against the government because somehow I'm not going to say somehow I think I have my theories as to why but when we send somebody there they don't do what we want they don't they just they constantly are making laws to shut um, you down as a person either through taxes or whatever so I'm very frustrated every time I think about it I just want to cry because when we as Americans do what we're allowed to do which has come onto the property we own and we pay for. Uh, it's a coup and you're awful and you're awful. And that in closing is the other thing I want to talk about is that conservative media is saying that this was an awful thing. We don't do this. We don't do this. Um, we are allowed to do this. As far as I'm concerned, I own that building and I share it with my fellow Americans. No, none of the people who work in that building unless they pay taxes, which senators and all them, they don't pay taxes. Okay. They don't own it. They work for me and they need to be doing what I say, which is basically leave me alone. I am very much one of those people who want to go right back to the, how it started and right back to it. You're only there to protect us from outside forces. And that's it. You don't get to have your hand in every single thing we do. You know, I've got four hands in my pocket every time I make money. Every time I want to do anything, I have to consider that. So I know this video was emotional and I know it was, you know, I might have said some things that are crazy, but, you know, let's talk about it down in the comments. Until tomorrow, guys, I will see you later.